What's up guys? This is Michael, Treeline Backpack here. I want to do something a little different today. Uh, I received this in the mail. This is the Gear Top Navigator 2 Plus. Uh, this is a four season tent that was sent to me. As I said, I just got this open. I wanted to do a uh, sort of an unboxing, I guess. We're going to set this up, pitch it, see what this thing has going for it. Uh, this is a very affordable tent that you can find on Amazon for about 170, 180 bucks. Uh, it is a four season tent, aluminum poles, uh, all that good stuff. And that's pretty much all I know about it. I'm not super familiar with the brand. I know they've been around for a little while, not super long. Uh, you can see some of the specs here. Uh, flashy square nylon, I guess that's ripstop nylon, seam taped. Uh, Pretty basic stuff. Uh, starting out with the initial impressions, the fabric for the stuff sack is not bad. Nice, uh, soft, thin nylon. I could appreciate that. Interesting stuff sack here. Got these nice cinches, clips, and this is something you don't really see. This is a roll top, so I guess you just slide everything in there, compress it down, roll that, and clip it to close it up. So, pretty neat. Um, it does have a little heft to it, as most four season tents do. Uh, let's go ahead and set this up, see what we have. So, what I'm doing here is I like to discover my tents when I get them for the first time. I never look at the manual, I never get online and see how they're supposed to be pitched. Basically, I'll take these things, 
see if I can figure out how to set it up without having to consult the manual. And that gives me an idea of how easy this is going to be for like the average guy who doesn't see a lot of tents. Uh, usually I can just come out, figure it out, get the tent pitched, and go from there. And that gives me a good starting point. This tent's a little bizarre because you can actually pitch, as you see, the outer layer first. And what I'm doing now is I'm going back and this inner layer is actually going to connect to the inner body. Uh, there's a couple advantages to this. One, you can pitch this, uh, get it out in the rain, and then you can pitch the inner body later and you can actually keep from getting wet. So an approach you don't see a whole lot. Uh, once you get this clipped, theoretically you'll be able to pitch the entire tent from the outside so that'll actually stay dry. But we'll see how that goes. I'm going to see if I can figure out this part next. Okay, so let's talk about this thing for a minute. Now, like I mentioned, you can find this for about 170, about 180 bucks on Amazon. So this is definitely a more affordable tent. I'm seeing some things I like about it. I'm seeing some things that I don't. We'll talk a little bit of each about that. Uh, start with some of the good stuff. I do see some interesting features. Now, if you look down below, you'll see these. These are basically little snow skirts. Uh, you can let these down. And this is going to block snow or sand, any kind of dust from blowing under your tent. If things start get, getting hairy, you can drop those down. Here, these actually have these little clips. It starts getting hot out. You can actually tuck this up. And what that's going to do, it's going to come off the ground a bit. And it's going to let air flow under the shelter. Which is going to help with condensation. It's going to help with heat. That's pretty nice. Uh, we do have a fairly generous amount of stakeout points. Got one in all the major areas. You see we have here one on the side that pulls the sidewalls out. We do have some vents up top. Uh, this is pretty soft, so the wind is going to kind of blow that up and down, but it is going to stay open, so that's kind of nice. So we do have pretty good ventilation up top at least. Now one thing that really bothers me about the design is this mesh. This mesh bothers me for a few reasons. Uh, for one, when I was up front pitching this, you can see that I was probably having a little trouble getting this pole through. What was happening is I was getting it bent through front, sending it across. 
And then here, the pull tip was jamming into this mesh, I'm getting hung up on that. And I could definitely see a pull eventually jamming itself through those little holes. So this isn't going to be the toughest material. It did slide pretty easily, so I give them that much. But there will be that issue. Another problem that's going to happen, if you're in any real wintry conditions, it starts raining, turns to ice, uh, this is going to build up snow and could potentially form essentially an ice layer. This could turn into a sheet of ice. Uh, that's usually why these are solid materials. Not only does it keep your poles dry, uh, the strings on the inside also, because those can get really cold and brittle, the strings, uh, when it gets really cold. Uh, but usually it's just to keep this from happening. So you may, if you're in really bad conditions, see that starting to ice up. And it's not too big of a deal while you're using it, but when you try to break this puppy down, not only is that ice going to add extra weight, uh, it could be a challenging to get some of the parts across. Uh, we do have a decent number of guy lines. We have one on each corner and what that's going to do that's going to add some extra stability uh, when the wind comes through and it blows it's going to pull not only from the pole but it's going to pull against the ground here see that line running all the way back now they do use pretty good quality tensioners i like these these are really easy to use uh, that slid really easily into place and it seems to be locking pretty strong pretty good quality poles too uh, they're actually really soft there's no hard like sharp edges which y'all see on a lot you have this little string to help you kind of pull it out of the ground help you see them so there is that I did put this one in backwards I wasn't really paying attention you see a little notch that should be on the other side so that the string will catch that and not pull over the top so when the wind's really rough but it's holding pretty well anyway so that's kind of nice keep her out for that uh, that's most of the features on the outside uh, the fabric is decent uh, it is pretty soft. I feel like I might be able to tear that with enough effort uh, for gentle wind, you know, moderate conditions. I think it's going to be fine. It looks like it might be coated once. A lot of times on tents you'll see two layers of coating. You'll see silicone that's for strength, tear resistance. And you also see uh, polyurethane or some other coating applied to there. And that's mostly for fire resistance. Uh, and if you get some sort of flame on the tent, instead of catching onto flame, which it will do if it's just silicone, it can actually do happen. Uh, that polyurethane will keep it from burning. You might just melt a little hole in your tent instead. So that's kind of nice. Now we do see the door up front. I have it open right now. A couple of things I like about this. You see this strap here. Now this is going to let you stake out either the door or the side of the door. So if you want, you can stake these out and that's going to create essentially like a little awning here so you can stake out the two corners just going straight to the ground uh, or you can stake out the corners like I did and this creates a little bit of a breezeway it's going to block some of the side winds so if you want to keep this front door open you can definitely do that so that's kind of nice I like having features like that you could probably wedge a trekking pole on the top and have that above your head so if you have trekking poles that's an option you're going to need two extra strings you can hook it in the loops, the trekking pole tip that is, and then run the string back to the ground so you can pitch it that way. Now you probably saw me setting this up. This is how the inner tent body connects to the tent. All you have is just this little guy. You pull this out, you pop it in, and that's all it takes to connect the inner and outer tent. That's really nice. Now if I was to pitch this with this all connected, I could actually pitch this in the rain without the inner tent body getting wet, and that's a really nice feature. I like that. Um, so that's a pretty cool little feature. You can see above us, pretty decent amount of headroom, uh, even above the inner body. That gap in there is very important. It's going to let airflow come through, keep condensation to a minimum, keep heat to a minimum. That's always nice. I'm going to go ahead and dive inside here, and. Of course we do have the side vents these roll back and they clip in place as well you can see a little tab here one on the bottom side pretty good ventilation up top we have a couple clips for accessories uh, I was playing with a little pocket out front before I set the tin up you could connect that into here get a little bit extra storage space so that's nice do have a small corner pocket down at one foot we have another one over here at the head always nice to have uh, now this is good to see I don't know if you can see what I'm looking at this is a reinforced corner 
So what happens is you have a series of stitches here, plus this is sort of like a flappy pocket that forms. And what this does is it keeps the pressure tugging on that corner, and instead it redirects all the tension around the corners here, which makes it a lot harder to tear than trying to just rip out some seam at the tip. Uh, seeing this, pretty cool to see on this uh, price of a tent. Now it is a little warm in there, it is July, it's kind of hard to judge what the uh, the regulation is going to be as far as temperature goes, but honestly it feels pretty good at this point, having the two bottom vents and the top vent is pretty nice, and the way those corners stake out really lets the air flow through here. Now if you look up top, this door is double zippered. You have a zipper for the inner door and a zipper for the outer, so you can zip up just the inner if you want to, and that's going to block wind, it's going to block rain, uh, at least to an extent. You really want to rely on that rain fly. Or you can zip up just the mesh, and that's going to allow you to have a nice breeze come through. If, it's, if you have it pointed in the right direction, you can have breeze blowing directly into the tent. It's going to keep the bugs and all that fun stuff out. So that's pretty cool. We do have these straps along the bottom. Uh, what that's doing is it's essentially creating the frame or the tension frame of the tent. And that's how you're able to pitch that inner body without having the poles first. Or well, not the poles, but the inner body. So you can pitch that ring fly and then connect this later. Uh, that's pretty important. You really can't set up a tent properly with the inner body connecting to the outer like that without having those. So it's good to see those. You can see this clip. If you push that, that's going to release that inner body. And of course you'd have to go through and undo all those little clips also. That's how that works. A little tie back for the door. Always nice to see. Now, the tent is pretty decent as far as stability goes. Uh, the poles are aluminum. I like to see that. They're not fiberglass, so it's not going to shatter the winds really pick up. Uh, it's not the strongest aluminum, it's not the tautest. Uh, even when I just push in with my hands, I do get some flex. It's uh, not ridiculous, uh, but if this is in strong winds, you're definitely going to feel it. Uh, you're going to hear it. There's going to be some buffeting on the side. Probably a fairly quiet tent, but it's not going to be as quiet as one of those really stiff mountaineering grade tents. Uh, I definitely would not call this a mountaineering tent. Uh, four season, sure. It's going to be warm. It's going to, with the doors and all that zipped up anyway, it's going to be nice and warm. It's going to block the breezes. So that's a nice feature. But if you tried to take this thing up on Everest, I have a feeling you'd probably regret it. In order to really give it that quality, you're going to need more guy lines, you're going to need more guy line connection points, stiffer pole system, uh, better quality aluminum. This aluminum is fine. Nothing wrong with this aluminum, um, but the good mountaineering tents are going to be made out of like DAC or even carbon fiber, uh, so they do step up their game on those. But overall, not bad. I'm really pretty impressed with it for the price, 170 bucks. If you're just a, a casual guy going out on a winter trip, you want to stay warm, you want to keep the snow out, uh, hold up to some. It's going to take rain fine. It's going to take moderate winds fine. If you're on the top of a 14,000 foot peak somewhere and a storm kicks in, um, maybe wouldn't be the best option for that. But if you're six to 7,000 feet in a moderate area, uh, standing under a tree line especially, this should be fine. It is a little on the heavy side. I don't know exactly the weight. I'll make sure to post a link to the specifications and all that. Uh, seems pretty feasible for a winter tent as far as carrying goes. So. It feels to me like about seven, maybe eight pounds, which is pretty fair for a winter tent. 170 bucks. This would be pretty hard to beat, honestly. Uh, spend another hundred, you could definitely get something a little bit beefier that I could probably consider being a mountaineering tent. But in this price range, this is pretty good. So if you have any questions, any thoughts, let me know. Um, I will try to do a full review of this. This is more just impressions, you know, first time I'm seeing it kind of situation. I want to know what you guys think of this process. If you want to see more of this kind of stuff, just let me know. But this is Michael, Treeline Backpacker. Thanks.